to that. First, though, um, if I were to just do this, this kind of gives them an indication as to certainly what is on the front page of one of the papers today, and it's in several of the papers. The radio and TV host and comic, Paul O'Grady, has made some big revelations about extraterrestrials. The love of dogs host says he believes he's been watched by aliens. And he's not the only one out there who thinks that uh, aliens do exist. According to the papers, the pop singer Hertfordshire's Kim Wilde agrees. She thinks they exist as well. Well, I am one of life's natural cynics. Now, I am cynical when I hear people say things like this. I'm a bit surprised, you know, Paul O'Grady, um, you know, you don't think of him as being bonkers. So when Paul O'Grady comes out and suggests that he's being watched by aliens, you think, well, oh, is he being truthful? Do we believe him? Do you believe people who say they've seen aliens? 08081 is the telephone number. Very interested to hear from you this morning. Joanne Summerscales is the founder of etnewsroom.com. She's interviewed people who've come into contact with alien life. I gather she's also had experiences with alien life herself. Good morning to you, Joanne. Hello, and good morning to you, Jonathan. Good morning. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to try and keep a straight face when we have this, this uh, conversation, because I am naturally cynical of this kind of thing. Well, uh, I... And I, I would imagine if, I'm not alone. No, absolutely not. But if you put it in the context, Jonathan, of people around the world believing in an invisible force that they don't see, have any evidence of, but yet religions are founded on it. I don't think it's any more peculiar than that, really, do you? Oh, yes, but as if you believe in that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let, let's just, first of all, talk about aliens. This idea that there are aliens out there living elsewhere in, in the galaxy, I presume they have homes on some planet somewhere else, do you believe in that? Uh, absolutely. I, it's not really a belief so much, Jonathan, as as a, a knowing. And I say a knowing because I've spoken to probably a few hundred people over the five or six or even seven years now that I've been um, interviewing people on camera and radio about their experiences. And believe you me, this isn't something that they take lightly or that they look for or that they want. And often... When they um, talk about their experiences and who do they speak to, um, they're often ridiculed, they're often sidelined and marginalised, and it can wreck marriages and businesses. And, you, you know, it, it, it changes people's life forever because I, I wrote a book in 2016 with Bill Brooks, an experiencer who was a straight-up West Midlands guy, didn't believe in anything. And at the age of 44, he came to realise that not only... Was he an, an encounter uh, person that he'd had not only encounters, but he'd had abductions, which is a familiar word in the experiencer world. But that had been going on since he was a tiny child from two years old. And sometimes this is how it goes. I mean, I haven't had one on one ET experiences myself, but I have had when I started my radio show in 2014, I was walking up with my little doggy before the show started and I put out a thought. I said, come on, guys, to whoever was listening uh, to the ET lot and said, give me a demonstration. Come on. And I looked skyward and I kid you not, I saw three points of light. And OK, there were points of light. There weren't craft, in, you know, a few yards in front of me, but they all behaved very strangely. They came oh, into awesome. a line and... Awesome. Yeah, I thought there were stars. And then I looked again. Of course, I thought they were stars. And then I looked again. I'm also sceptical <laughs> and question. And then the one on the left zipped off to the left. The one in the centre zipped centre. And the one in the right zipped. Now, you, they were not satellites. You don't get satellites doing that. And you don't get stars doing that. So what was that? I don't know. But like Paul O'Grady says, we just don't know. And good for him because... And Kim Wilde, great, great, great. And I'm also putting together an album of experiencer-led music material. So this is something going on in the psyche at the moment. And so any Brit musicians, singer-songwriters, do contact the ET Newsroom and uh, we'll have a chat with you about including your material on this new album that's coming out hopefully in the summer. But, but, but 
but Joanne, I mean, that, that, that's the point, isn't it? People make money from all this kind of stuff. Do and, they? And, do they? I, I have not I mean, made seem... money doing my research, I can tell you. And most people live in penury because of it. Because if they, if they do speak about this kind of thing, honestly, Jonathan, it is such a massive impact. It changes people's life forever. OK, it's... but then the, the human brain mm. is very complicated. And we've all had times where... We kind of nod off to sleep and we have one of those weird dreams where you're not quite sure if you're awake or asleep. Oh, of course. But the imagination can, can be hugely powerful. Are you sure that people who say they've seen these things and have had conversations with aliens, are you sure they're not dreaming? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure about the people I spoke to. And listen, what about all the radar returns? What about all the military stuff that has been recorded? Even Britain, you know, has laid out stuff. And, and in December last year, uh, the US released, you know, film of the of gun sites of um, one of their craft, aircraft picking up something anomalous. So, you know, it's coming out. It is filtering into the mindset of humanity. And more and more people are coming forward and speaking about it. And People are very welcome to to have a chat with me. I, it's a non-judgmental process, but you know, when you don't have anywhere to go with these things, you know, people are used to the ghost hunting thing. They accept that. They accept the paranormal. But why don't they accept the alien thing when they can accept the God thing? What is that why story? I, why haven't I seen anything then? In my many years of being alive, why have I never seen anything remotely alien-like? Yeah, I, Jonathan, I, I don't know. I, you know, I ask, I, I'm deeply embedded in the subject matter, and I put out that question now and again. I said, guys, why don't you just turn up? <laughs> <laughs> They haven't, but I have, you know, I photographed something in 2011. I was taking um, some sky shots and when I downloaded them, and this is apropos of, of, of the alien and what you, what you see and the craft. And when I downloaded them, I was absolutely shocked to see coming out of my images, three shots of a pencil shaped light craft moving and it's in three frames. And I, and I was astonished. Now, I've had that analysed. And they said it's definitely not any kind of camera glitch. It's definitely not any fig, you know, tri, uh, figure of light uh, acting on the camera. It is an anomalous object. So I wasn't even expecting that. I wasn't even looking for it. And sometimes that's how it is. I don't know why some have it, why Bill Brooks would have this incredible experience, because he had that not only in the UK, but also when he was stationed in 1968 in Senelaga, Germany, as a young soldier. Kim Wilde, the pop star, she yeah. lives in Hertfordshire. Yeah. As indeed do I. Now, Kim Wilde is absolutely convinced that, you know, she's seen all these aliens in Hertfordshire, apparently. But why haven't I seen them? You know, I look at the same st sky mm. as she does. I go off in the countryside in the same places that she does. Why Why have these so-called aliens that are all around, they come to see her because she's got a vivid imagination. Well, you know, that is a good point. Um, but, you know, I don't know why I haven't seen anything either. <laughs> well, well, maybe because, you, because you're <laughs> sensible. Well, it's not. it's not about being sensible. You cannot... You cannot help what interacts upon you. So it's not that you're looking for it. And I'll cite Bill Brooks again. This was a guy who not only didn't believe in anything to do with this stuff, he was absolutely anti it. And he would have thought people like me were complete fruitcakes had he not had a full in your face uh, experience where it took him two years to recover from because he was traumatized. A lot of people are very traumatized because. They have they have a, an attitude like yourself, Jonathan, and really probably like myself, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, perhaps, where I couldn't countenance it. It just was so peculiar. But then when people, you know, have their, um, you know, their their beliefs and things unseen and then expect, you know, everybody to believe it. And there is a collective consciousness thing going on here. So. How can we can all believe in something called God, this invisible, fantastic force, and and not aliens? Why? How? I was just listening to a scientist last night, David Adair, who was a savant building rockets and all the rest of that, and he did the maths on it, and he said, <laughs> he said there aren't thousands of of you know planets out there. He said there are millions that are. In